I'll walk you through how to create a BI8 board, the slim version of this board. It looks like this, a nice printed circuit board with the zigzag uh, form factor. And uh, to use this for anything, we need to have an Arduino breakout shield made for this board and the other Skorhoi PCB designs. And uh, as the Arduino platform, I'm going to use an Arduino Ethernet. So uh, since we will only come so and so far with this one, unless we have a shield to connect it, I'll start out by the shield. And um, the first thing is that uh, we need all the components necessary for this shield. You can find that if you look at the website, if you go to scorehigh.com to uh, the wiki pages, um, go to the wiki pages, you see as one of the first links at all, you can go to the GitHub repository where we have the open engineering repository. And in this, you find all our PCB designs, including in the utility folder, board folder here, the Arduino Breakout Shield 2. And that's the one we are going to take a look at today. I would like to show you the contents of this uh, RTF file, and I had hoped that I could actually download it, but um, you will probably trust me if I show that I have this on a folder on my hard drive, so I could show it from there. Yes, um, there we go, and uh, I'll also bring up the schematic of uh, the breakout shield in Eagle. Um, there's the schematic, and I don't have any um, comment to it really right now, because I would like to look at what this file says. First of all, it documents what uh, the different connections are for and why we have them. And then in the use scenarios, I think we have done some, uh, gone through some trouble to actually explain the various ways you could use this shield and what you need to take a look at. So first of all, if we look at some of the features uh, this, uh, this, this shield has, um, there's a space for a, um, a reset button. You can see it right uh, here. There's a reset button there. And there's also um, space for a reset button here, depending on which type of model you would like to use. Um, the one that you can place here is a side-looking reset button. So uh, it's supposed to penetrate the side of a uh, enclosure. And um, the other one is an onboard reset button, which um, makes sense if, if somehow this is uh, accessed from, uh, or if the user will access the reset button directly yeah, from here. So yeah, it's up to you. Basically, resets button, reset buttons are um, some you place as you like. Um, then we have the configuration switch, and this is used on models like uh, C101, C201, etc for enabling configuration. Again, this is a side looking, so it could go through an enclosure uh, wall. Um, what else is here? And these are, these are all optional, depending on what you want to do. Um, and what you can see from, from this document over here is also an explanation of how you can enable the configuration button. So uh, if you read th through the text, it will tell you, uh, you need to short the solder jumper for S3 pointing to A1 to use the configuration switch. Ha ha. Okay, so what is that little solder jumper I'm talking about? That's the solder jumper right there. This little guy will connect the switch over here to the correct pin on the shield. So these kinds of details are put into this rich text uh, RTF document. And uh, if you want to know how it's actually wired, you of course will have to take a look at the schematic directly. So uh, here's the, the, the schematic of um, the design. And um, just now that we were talking about this, uh, this configuration thing, then let's take a look if we can find this is the one. Um, this is the configuration switch and this is the solder jumper called S3 to A1. Um, the one that I suggested you would solder. Okay, so this is uh, just basically what this document tries to explain. And if we're looking at the details for our case where we need to make an Arduino Ethernet, we need to um, 
um, to read these lines. Well, first of all, no matter what what you do, you will need to connect the shield using a, a rows of uh, header posts like, like this one. And uh, since we have an Arduino Ethernet of an older type, we don't have access to the I squared C uh, connections, uh, which are found here on some newer models. Uh, we'll have to use them from A4 and A5 down there. Um, but this is no problem at all. The shield supports uh, both. So for, um, for the digital side, I, um, I cut this one up in eight and eight, like this, and then six, whoops, I would like to get that one back, thank you. Um, and then finally, um, because we are on an Arduino Ethernet, I would like the programming header. And the programming header is, um, is found here on the board. So this is the programming header where you normally connect your FTDI programming cable. But the shield supports this in a way. So when we, we put the shield on top here, you can see that we get access to the programming header. This, this, the programming header is taken out um, to uh, the front of the board right here. So what we do on the front is typically we solder a side looking header post on either here or on the, on the uh, underside if, uh, if we wish that. Okay, so um, I'll get going soldering these. Um, so when you make sure that all these header posts are firmly grounded, you take your soldering iron and you do your stuff. Um, so that was the header posts. The next thing is to, uh, to read through this list and we see that um, if we have an Arduino Ethernet without the extended I2C headers, um, then we need to short jumper 5 and 6 and they actually have solder jumpers as well. Those jumpers are located, um, they are located on the board right here. So this is uh, this will connect, it says A4 to SDA, and the other one over here says S5 to SDA. You could also short these two, but uh, since this is a permanent thing, a solder jumper is simply, you just place a little ball of solder on top of those two pads. That's it, and now there's a connection there, permanently. The next thing we'll read from the list is uh, if we have an Arduino Ethernet solder the programming header, yes, we did that already. Um, we need to short the solder jumper if we use a config switch, which we don't. We mount the I2C pull-up resistors if uh, you like to use them centrally. And you like to use those centrally because the right design for the I2C bus is to have uh, the pull-up resistors only one place on the bus and we put them on the uh, breakout shield here. So um, I have two of these resistors somewhere. So the resistors for the I2C pull-up are located right there. And uh, first I provide a little bit of flux and then I take my resistors and put R2 and I need to flip it around first. Just a moment and there you have R1 and push them into place like that. Then I take my soldering iron and put a little bit of solder on the tip 
like that. And I find it quite nice to have like that. And then on the other side. And sometimes I, I heat it until I can move the resist a little bit just so that it sort of springs in place if it wasn't really in place then resistors you know can often be pushed a little around like that okay so that were the pull up resistors and um, then we go back to the document and we see that we need to mount the serial and encoder headers and a flat cable receptor on either bottom or top depending on your space needs so what does that mean? Now, um, this is where we need to, to take this apart from each other again. And I have to advise you to be a bit careful not to bend the header posts. So you will learn that maybe the hard way. But basically, uh, the flat cable receptor, this guy, this little guy here, is um, you can either mount it on the top side. If you mount it on the top side, you look for where it says, um, there's an, an indication saying um, top side, and if you you want it on the top side, you put the the receptor flat cable receptor right there. But if you go to the bottom, you see that um, the, it doesn't say say button side. But basically, you shouldn't mount anything here because there's no silk screen indicating this is uh, a place you can put components. But there is silk screen uh, right here. So if mounted on the bottom side, you put it it here. And this is really important, of course, because it all de um, determines what becomes pin number one and pin number two, etc. Now, in our case, we are going to put it on the top side. So um, basically, I just uh, put it here and I solder the whole, whole thing from the bottom. So now I need to put the flat cable and I have some flat cable right here. I usually have some uh, 10 wire flat cable in stock, but for this I'm using only eight wires. So I take away two and um, those eight wires are then mounted so that I use the black as pin number one. This is the convention that I use. You can use your convention if you like. So you basically place it into this um, receptor for the flat cable and um, you need to squeeze it then. And for squeezing, it's uh, pretty nice if you have some kind of plier like this. Okay. So, uh, and then gently you, you push this together. Um, of course, if you soldered it already, even though the pins are breaking a little bit on the back side, it's, uh, it shouldn't be a problem uh, as long as it's uh, tightly pressed onto the flat cable, it should be fine. In the other end, you put a um, IDC receptor like this one. Notice the small triangle. You can see um, on, these, on these receptors there are usually a little triangle and that triangle indicates that this is pin number one. So for this guy, I am going to put the black wire in this side of, of the receptor, just like that. And then I take my, my plier, which can, can push it together. And I like to do that sidewards like you see here, because when I do that, I apply equal pressure on the whole plug, more or less. That was not entirely true. I had a little more pressure on the one side. Uh, so you need to be careful, but basically you should be able to squeeze this plug onto the flat cable like that okay so i think we are more or less done with the shield here um, we need to check the list of course the authoritative list so do we have a configuration switch no we don't need that we don't need this and this yes so the shield is now ready for action i have the pull-up resistors and everything is is wired as it should be. Um, I didn't put a reset button, but I can do that another day. I'm now ready for the BI-8 board.